another episode of Vipers Voices and it follows another victory for the Desert Vipers, this one by 22 runs over uh, the Dubai Capitals. The Desert Vipers batting first after being put into bat made a very impressive 182 for 7 and uh, in the end restricted the Dubai Capitals to 160 in response. I've got Colin Munro alongside me, the captain of the Desert Vipers. And first of all, Skipper, congratulations, because this victory confirms you in the top two. And of course, that gives you two bites at the cherry in terms of uh, getting through to the final. So it's uh, the first part of the mission accomplished, I guess. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, that was, I think, as a, as a team coming into the tournament, we spoke about trying to qualify and then finals with finals, you know, anyone can win on the day. So to finish in the top two and, and have that life is very pleasing for us. And we obviously play Gulf Giants in our last game and we could potentially play them in the one and two as well. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what combinations come up from them and um, yeah, looking forward to it. 182 for seven after you were put into bat. Would you have accepted that at the, to at the uh, coin toss? Yeah, 100%. I think um, you know, a couple of early wickets uh, against us and then you know the partnership of you know Billings and Rutherford and then that took one over uh, took the game away from them like I said uh, in the press conference taking away about 20 20 odd off that over it becomes a an even game so you know the way Rutherford put Patan under pressure and hit those five sixes in a row was amazing to watch. Yeah that really was incredible wasn't it because the game was on a knife edge up to that point and then Shafane went ballistic as we know he can do and he has done in this tournament previously and would it be simplistic or, or fair to say that the whole game turned on that one over? No I think he nailed it I think it was that one over was the difference I think um, you know they bowled well in patches put us under pressure but you know we soaked it up Billings' uh, innings was, was, was really good and, and key for us you know I don't think it's too pleased with him talking to him about you know the pace of his innings but I think that that really allowed others to come in and play those cameos around him so it's not always about going out there and playing the perfect innings it's about playing playing what's well for the team and he's done that tremendously well for us this year so yeah it's um, a, a great team effort um, we've done that two games in a row now so very pleased from that. Yeah, it was 76 for four when those two came together and they added 80 in 43 balls and that all of a sudden gave you the platform for that really big total. Yeah, changed the game right there. Um, it was unbelievable, and I think the way even TC came in and hit the ball at the end was 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 pleasing too. And um, you know, I think that's the key. Sometimes look, people look at our batting lineup and probably think we probably are batted too short. But when we've got all rounders and genuine all rounders that that bat six, seven, eight, and even nine, um, you know, it allows us to go out there and still play with freedom. Yeah, that was crucial, wasn't it? Luke Wood and Tom Curran adding 30 in the last three overs after Sam Billings and Shervain Rutherford had both been dismissed. The innings could have ended in a whimper, but it actually ended in a bang. Yeah, they took the momentum straight into the break and, and carried it through and got an, got an early wicket too. So sometimes you can lose that momentum and, and give them a little bit of leeway. Um, but I thought we were outstanding tonight. Uh, throughout that sort of back end of, the, of our innings. And, um, you know, we started off well getting a couple of early wickets too. Were you at any stage worried in the field with uh, the Dubai Capitals chase? Oh, as, as long as Rodman Powell's there, you're always a little bit stressful. Um, but I thought, you know, the way we bowled Luke Wood again, hold his nerve, hit hard length on, on that wicket was hard to hit square. And we know you're going to be targeting that short boundary. So um, got the fruits there when, when it hit top of off stump. But yeah, it is, it's um, pleasing to see guys stepping up and, and uh, Luke Wood's coming back into this tournament and done a tremendous job for us and you know we, we've got plenty of options and that's great as, as a captain to, to rely on. Now some catches have gone down during this tournament but a couple of crackers taken today by Rowan Mustafa out on the boundary and also Sherfane Rutherford at uh, short third as well. Very important grabs. Yeah great for others to have some confidence he's dropped a couple so he was he was very happy with himself and you know we all got around him it's not easy when you've dropped a couple of catches and a couple go, go to you and it seems sometimes to just follow you so you know, and Ronnie's been a, an outstanding fielder for us for um, the whole tournament. He's really stepped up and, and done that work really well for us on the boundary and, and, and a tremendous catch. That could have been also a point of difference too if uh, Raza carried on batting there, but you know, a tremendous catch on the run. Um, those are never easy as your eyes are going up and down. So, yeah, very, very happy with that. And, you know, our fielding probably hasn't been up to the standards that we wanted to set, to be honest. But, you know, as long as the attitude's, attitude's there, um, 
you can't really complain. People don't want to drop catches on purpose, so you can't really have a go at anyone for that. So as long as, like I said, the attitude's well and, and good and everyone's putting in, that's all I can ask for. Now, just talk to us about a very interesting moment during that Dubai Capitals yeah, Dubai. innings, towards the start of Rodman Powell's innings, actually, when uh, I think you appealed for obstructed the field. Just talk us through what happened there. Well, I asked Kotti if, if the throw was online, and he said, yep. So I appealed. He's obviously a very dangerous batter. Um, I didn't know from I was at backward point to see if he had changed his direction or not. So I, I obviously appealed for it to to go upstairs, and he's held his line, and and you know that's within the rules, and that's you know that's all that, that, that sort of matters at the end. So into the top two, that's confirmed. The first two, first team to be confirmed in the uh, the top two of this tournament. What's the feeling? Relief, excitement? What is it? Um, not relief at all. I don't think. You know, we, we came here as, as a group that we knew we had a good team. We spoke about that, but cricket's not one on it's not one on paper. You've got to go out and perform, and we've done that as a team, as and as individuals to put their hands up too. So, to finish in the top two is, is I think, something that we deserve because we played tremendous cricket and uh, consistent cricket too. So, um, people will be hunting us, I think, um, which is cool because people have to play their best cricket to beat us. And it means, of course, you stay here in Dubai. Uh, there was the possibility of three against four uh, playing in Sharjah in that eliminator. It means all your matches here are in Dubai. Are you happy with that? Yeah, very happy. I think we play good cricket here um, in Sharjah. We obviously won one and lost one, but um, tough sort of surface to know what, what you're going to get up there. So we know the wickets that are going to be prepared here in, in Dubai and you know we can plan accordingly. Now, the last match in the group stage for the Desert Vipers is the Gulf Giants, who've been vying with you at the top of the table throughout the uh, entire tournament. Now, you've lost to them once already in the group stages. They're pushing for a top two spot. They're up against uh, MI Emirates in that particular uh, battle. Is it an opportunity for you to introduce a few fresh faces for that last uh, group game, maybe rest a few players? Or you've won, you're doing nicely, is it a case of trying to stay on a roll? I haven't spoken too far with the coaches about that yet, but I think as players, uh, we want to try and play our best team again and, and try and keep momentum. We don't want to lose one and then go into a final. So we want to play our, I think, you know, we want to play our best team, keep winning, take momentum into finals and hopefully uh, win that one and two and go straight through. Congratulations, Skipper. Well done. And uh, of course, the next game, Gulf Giants in two days time. Looking forward to that? Yeah, looking forward to the top of the table. Um, they're playing some great cricket as well. Um, so, yeah, just looking forward to the challenge of, of obviously playing against some good cricketers too. And a score to settle maybe. And, of course, as you mentioned earlier, the fact that you could come up against them later in the tournament as well. So psychological points to be made too? Yeah, a little bit, I think. Uh, you don't want to go, you don't want to lose to a team twice and, and, and round robin and then have to play them in the, in the final, even though it doesn't really count for much. You know, final's a final and... Like we saw today, one, one person can change the game in, in, in four or five balls. So, um, yeah, it would be great to obviously get a win over, over them and, and take that momentum into the finals, like I said before.